Hello and welcome to News Round, a recap of stories that made headlines during the week. Coming up. The political atmosphere in Edo State takes a new shape as the state's House of Assembly impeached and battled Philip Shaibu as deputy governor, ending a long-drawn drama between him and Governor Godwin Abasaki. Early morning fire destroys buildings and assets at the popular Dosumu market in Lagos Island. The battled former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Amefele, has been released after meeting the bill conditions granted him by the court. Plus, Vietnamese real estate billionaire Trong Milan gets death penalty in the country's biggest financial fraud. I'll begin news round in Edo State where the face-off between Governor Godwin Abasaki and his deputy, Philip Shaibu, reached its climax as the State House of Assembly impeached the deputy governor. This followed the adoption of the report of the seven-man investigative panel set up by the Assembly to probe allegations of misconduct against Mr. Shaibu. Almost immediately, the lawmakers swore in Mr. Omubaya Godwin to replace Mr. Shaibu as deputy governor. Speaker of the Edo State House of Assembly, Blessing Agbibaku, sounding the final kernel on the fate of Philip Shaibu as Deputy Governor of the state. According to the Speaker, the impeachment followed the adoption of the report of a seven-man committee set up by the Chief Judge of Edo State, Justice Daniel Okumbuwa, to investigate allegations of misconduct against Mr. Shaibu. Specifically, he was accused of perjury, divulging government secrets and anti-party activities. However, it's also an open secret that the relationship between the impeached deputy governor and his principal, Godwin Obaseki, has since fallen apart over Mr. Shaibu's ambition to get the governorship ticket of the People's Democratic Party after a fierce primary exercise. 557, 558. The party settled for Aswe Igodalo, and Mr. Shwaibu, who claimed he won a parallel primary, was left to lick his wounds after the party recognized Mr. Igodalo as its flag bearer. Asuri me Igodalo. But that was not enough to deter Mr. Shwaibu who later stormed the headquarters of the People's Democratic Party, demanding a certificate of return. Today is the day set aside by the electoral guideline, approved by the National Working Committee, to be the day that uh, the return certificate will be issued. And so it's, it's not something surprising I'm here. I'm here to receive my uh, certificate of return because I won the primaries uh, in Edo that was conducted and uh, the authentic delegates voted. This impeachment is therefore not a surprise to many observers of the political drama in Edo State. The drama continues, however, as Mr. Shaibu promptly rejected the action of the State Assembly, citing some irregularities. I denounce in strongest term the illegal impeachment by the Edo State House of Assembly over Trump of charges. This is not just an attack on me as an individual, but on the very democratic principle that we hold there. It's a dangerous descent into dictatorship and a threat to the foundation of our democracy. Uh, 
Shortly after, a mobile, marvelous Godwins takes his oath of office as the new deputy governor of Edo State. He goes ahead to speak on his plans for the office. I will do the best. It is only when I am done, it is not when I am tired, I will, be, I will do my best and ensure that Edo is moved from where he has taken it to a more enviable height. Yeah. The 38-year-old engineer who has been in the private sector for a better part of his career had his first feel of politics when he contested for the House of Representatives in Edo State under the platform of Labour Party. But he lost that election to the APC candidate, Mr. Peter Apatterson. Today, he is the deputy governor of Edo State under the People's Democratic Party, a position he is expected to occupy till the end of the current administration in the state. Another fire disaster hit the popular Dosimu market in Lagos Island, coming barely three weeks after some parts of the same market were engulfed in an inferno. The early morning fire, which started from a two-story building in Dosimu Dumata Street, Jankar, spread to other nearby structures. To contain the further spread of the raging fire, emergency officials who responded to the situation later resorted to pulling down one of the buildings. The smoke billows and can be seen from afar. According to the residents of the area, the fire started at about 10.40 a.m. The chaos of the early scene is captured by eyewitnesses as the traders are thrown into a state of confusion. With the complement of emergency management officials, firemen continue to mount pressure in an attempt to see off the fire. When the fire incident occurred and it affected a generator that they are loading, that they are fueling, what they did is, is was that they instead of them to put up the fire, to limit the fire to that generator, they threw the fire out. In the process of throwing the fire out, it, it, it involved other properties. The fire has already affected 14 buildings now, both severe and partial effects. 14 as at worst by one, but the fire is under control now. Although emergency management officials say the fire is under control, but right in my background you can see fire service men are working really hard to put out the fire completely. This is one of the many fire incidents seen in this particular neighborhood and it is one of the most destructive so far. It's a big fire with massive impact. Buildings in different streets are affected, but the Semo Street has taken the biggest heat and could barely stand. Major challenge was water, and we were able to secure the replenishment center from National Port Authority MP, not far away from here. And that's why the fire is totally under control. We know the number of uh, shops, number of uh, traders, and other uh, statistics that are necessary. However, the most important thing is we have been bringing it to them. They need safety measures, insurance coverage, and fire marshals in strategic positions. Like the fire started there around 10, and that fire ought to have been managed by them, not going out of hand. If I your base store has gone down, another building where his goods are stored is still standing but badly affected. Watches as his men try to salvage some of the items stored in the building. My boys called me that something is happening in Dosumu. So I asked them what is it. They said this fire is burning everywhere. Before 
before I rush down to this place, my shop, all my shop has finished. And even of my warehouse here also has finished. Nothing, nothing come out from there. I think the way they are building like, uh, their house in uh, this uh, Lagos Island is, okay. I believe, it's too much, it's too congested, and uh, there's no space. One system is affecting one business, it must affect the other one. Estimates of the properties destroyed in this inferno has not been ascertained at the time of this report. However, it is clear that authorities need to do more to forestall a recurrence of similar disaster in Lagos Island. Dari Idu. Channels Television News. Meanwhile, former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Mr. Gordon Mefele, has been released from the custody of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. This came after he met the bill conditions granted him by the Lagos High Court in Keja in the sum of 50 million naira and two shorties in like sum. The EFCC had last week uh, charged Mr. Mefele before the court on a 26 count charge bordering on alleged abuse of office and irregular allocation of $4.5 billion and $2.8 billion naira, respectively. Justice Ramon Oshodi, who ruled on former CBN Governor Gabriel Mefiele's application, admitted him to bail in the sum of 50 million naira with two shorties and like sum. And shortly after the court granted him bail, trial started with the EFCC calling his first prosecution witness. The witness, Mondo Sazua, who is a staff of the Central Bank of Nigeria, told the court how the former CBN governor on different occasions directed him to collect the sum of $3 million cash in tranches. Led in evidence by the prosecution counsel and senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Rotimio Yedipo, Mr. Sazua told the court how he served as a dispatch rider in Zenit Bank, after which he joined the Apex Bank, as well as the many errands he ran for the former CBN governor. He further confirmed to the court that he knew Dummies Oil and Gas Limited while he was in Zenit Bank PLC and added that the former CBN governor, who was also the MD of the company, always sent him to collect checks from one Mr. Monday. When he was asked where the second defendant resides, he said that Henry Isioma Omoile lived in the residence of the former CBN governor. The witness was also cross-examined by the defendant's counsel, Abdul Hakim Labi Lawal. He confirmed to the court that he had been working with the defendant since 2002, but he could not say the precise number of years or months he has seen the second defendant. Osazawa said that he was sure that Omoile had been living in Mr. Mefiele's house for some months. He affirmed that the former CBN governor passed instruction to him through the second defendant and that he had been collecting checks for dummies, oil and gas. The court has adjourned the case to April 29, 2024 for continuation of trial and for hearing of some applications requesting a closed session for some of the prosecution's witnesses. Welcome back. Well, let's take you to River State where there seems to be another twist of events in the state's polit politics with former Governor Peter Odili endorsing Governor Similai Fubara and praising him for defending the interests of the people. Dr. Odili, who was the state governor between 1999 and 2007, said that Governor Fubara, having secured his election both through the ballot and the courts, is now the political leader of River State. For standing up to your oath of office to defend the interest of all rivers people in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You have done that standing on firm ground and with the strength and courage of a lion. We are, we are, we are proud of you. Politics is over. It is now time for governance and you have hit the ground running. You have touched the critical sectors in less than one year in office. Our people say I should tell you to stand firm with the president, align with his positive policies, and carry reverse people to the engine room of government in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. 
for those who have not bothered to pay attention. If you look at the map of Nigeria, the entire map of Nigeria is sitting on River State. When River State coughs, Nigeria will catch cold. So regard, regard your office as key and vital. Don't look back. It is not a matter of age. It is a matter of your people are with you. And they've asked me to tell you that you are the political leader of River State. Meanwhile, some political players of the Equator descent in Amoha local government area of River State have declared the FC minister, Yesom Wike, the leader of the PDP in the state. The sons and daughters of the council made their position known during a stakeholder meeting at the Amoha council headquarters. They also reaffirmed their support for President Bola Tinubu and thanked him for appointing Mr. Wike as FCT minister. Nostrous son of Equator land. This is a gathering of politicians, traditional rulers, women groups, as well as other stakeholders of Equerry Descent at the Emoha Local Government Area Council of River State. They are here for a meeting and their aim is to restate their support for the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyesum Wiki. We are behind you. Leading the group is the local government chairman, Chidi Lloyd, who in his speech refers to Mr. Wiki as the undisputed leader of the PDP in the states. We are here to renew our commitment to the renewed hope agenda and to thank the president for finding one of our own, our leader, the leader of the People's Democratic Party in River State, Chief Honorable Barrister Ezewon Yezo Mite. <laughs> for finding him worthy to be appointed as the first Southerner, the first Southerner to sit as Minister for the Federal Capital Territory. Interestingly, the former Chief of Staff, who is also a Commissioner in the current administration, as well as a member of the State House of Assembly, re echo Mr. Lloyd's statement about the status of the Minister of the FCT in River State PDP. It is ridiculous and funny to see that instead of people focusing on governance, focusing on delivering and discharging the responsibility with which they sought for vote and they were voted for, only here every day is that Wike did not do this and Wike did not do that. Is Wike see the governor of Viva? I stand with Chief Barrister Ezebuwe Yeso Wike. I stand with Ahmed Bolatinibu. So my people, I want to thank you for your show of support. At the end of the exercise, a communique stating the position of the assembly is read out. That we all, Mr. President, to beware of certain politicians who are currently parading themselves in River State as supporters of the Tinibu administration. We are aware that these politicians were supporters of a presidential candidate with whom they maligned and disparage the personality of Mr. President during the 2023 campaigns and elections. These politicians have gathered under a fair political platform to destabilize and make the system. This is yet another in a series of ongoing political battles between supporters of the former governor and his successor, Simon Alai Fubara, in their political face-off. Charles, Upper Room, Channels Television News. And over to Oyo State, where Governor Shea Mackinde has condemned the assault on two officials of a state road transport management agency by the Nigerian Immigration Service personnel in Ibadan, the state capital. The incident happened after officials of the state transport agency apprehended an officer of the Immigration Service for alleged violation of traffic rules. Governor Mackinde registered his displeasure when he visited the two officials of the residences before calling at the state command of the Nigeria Immigration Service in Ibadan. <laughs> 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 
That was the chaotic scene at the zonal office of the Nigeria Immigration Service in Ibadan, the Oyo State Capital, on Friday, April 5, 2024, as men of the State Road Transport Management Agency attempted to arrest an immigration officer who allegedly violated the state traffic law. At the end of the face-off, Mr. Nuruddin Abiola and Mr. Taiwo Adeagbo, who were assaulted, were briefly hospitalized. Following the ugly incident, the governor for your state, Mr. Sheyi Makinde, and some members of the cabinet paid a visit to the assaulted officers for being brave despite the odds and assured them that justice would be served. These individuals are just trying to uh, enforce the law of the state. Because you work for a federal agency does not mean you are superior. So I've asked the uh, Honorable Attorney General, we will follow this through. We will write to uh, uh, the immigration authorities and uh, we will prosecute the people involved. Next stop for the team is the immigration office at Agodi, where the governor held a closed-door meeting with the Comptroller of Immigration in the state, Mr. Abdul Rashid Adimola, to express his displeasure over the unwarranted assault on officers of the State Traffic Management Agency. We have zero tolerance for people breaking traffic rules, uh, uh, but I've been assured that uh, the uh, Nigeria Immigration uh, Service uh, uh, your State Command and also uh, the Zone they will cooperate with us. Governor Markinde, who described the incident as unfortunate, noted that Oyo State is known for inter- and intra-regency cooperation, and such synergy must be maintained as the state continues its zero tolerance for people breaking traffic rules. And to other matters now, the president joined other Muslim faithful at Donan Barracks praying ground to observe the Ido Fitri prayers. The chief imam of Lagos, Sheikh Suleiman Abu Nola, in his sermon said that the festivity promotes a culture of sacrifice, unity and tolerance among the Muslims. This was echoed after the prayers by President Bola Tinibu, who asked Muslims to sustain the lessons from the month of Ramadan, uh, just as he enjoined all Nigerians to keep faith with his government and remain hopeful for a better country. There is heavy security presence at the Doda Barrack Spring Ground as Muslim faithful arrive here in little groups of family, friends and associates for the Idil Fitri prayers. Some other faithful arrive appearing fashionable with mats and tasbih, while children are not left out of the festival. High-profile personalities are also here exchanging pleasantries, including the Minister of Blue Economy, Boye Gawayetola, former Minister of Works, Babatunde Fashola, the Lagos State Deputy Governor, Femi Hamzad, and other top-ranking Islamic clerics. And then comes President Bola Tunubu, which signals the start of the e prayers. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Sami Allahu liman hamida. Rabbana. In his sermon, the chief imam of Lagos, Sheikh Suleiman Abu Nola, speaks of the significance of the festival with a charge to the country's leadership and followers. The love of your country is part of it. We call upon the government at all levels to provide more palliatives to 
alleviate the plight of our people. For us as citizens, who all have our responsibilities and duties to our nation, let us be disciplined, let us be law-abiding, let us ensure peace and harmony in our various communities. Speaking to newsmen shortly after the prayers, President Tunubu again urges Nigerians to continue to show resilience, patriotism and hope. The kind of uh, resilience, sacrifice, endurance that we have, we should preserve that for the country. Be kind and be cheerful giver. Love our country better than any other country. Other prominent clerics are positive about the president's leadership capacity. The war we are facing now is the war of hunger and everything. But fortunately, there is somebody there who is sensitive to the feelings of uh, Nigerians. The president is saying a lot, but you have to be patient. Is it be rude? What's up, be rude? The Idel Fitri celebration continues on Thursday with the extension of the public holiday by the federal government. But for Muslim faithful, the festival, which signifies the completion of the holy month of Ramadan, is a reminder to stay true to the values of their religion and ensure that the teachings of the Ramadan are sustained beyond this period. Kelly. A Giga Channels Television News. Oh, we got news round in Vietnam where a billionaire property developer, Trung Milan, has been sentenced to death over her role in a $12.5 billion financial fraud case. Milan was found guilty of embezzlement, bribery, and violations of banking rules, though she denied all the charges. She looted the country's largest bank, Saigon Joint Stock Commercial Bank, over a period of 11 years uh, through thousands of ghost companies and by paying bribes to government officials. The 67-year-old's case is seen as one of the greatest bank frauds the world has ever seen. The lawyers now have 15 days to appeal the verdict. She's one of the very few women in Vietnam to be sentenced to death for a white-collar crime. The value of her alleged asset appropriation was equivalent to about 3% of Vietnam's GDP in 2022, and prosecutors said they seized more than 1,000 properties belonging to her. And that's News Round for the week. Thank you for watching. I'm Laddie Williams. Bye-bye.